More and more people seemingly have gut issues, problems with their digestion, and it's no coincidence that correlates to the increased amount of oxidative stress in our environment, from electric and magnetic fields to agrochemicals in our food supply. It's pretty easy to understand the point you need to get to, that you want to get to. That person that can eat anything, has clear skin, high energy, and looks perfect. But what does that healthy person without gut issues constitute? Two things really, a functioning organ system and a healthy microbiome. Once you break that down into each individual organ function and the specific bacterial profile, you'll understand what it takes to fix that problem. As with many things in life, much easier said than done, but there is a fairly consistent protocol and way to go about addressing gut issues. And keep in mind, the majority of people will fix their gut issues by simply following a healthier diet. Note that the severity of said gut issues will vary greatly from person to person, but again, a large percentage of people will fix their gut issues by just removing processed foods, eating more whole foods, going organic to remove those chemicals, incorporating more animal foods for nutrient density. Before we jump in here, if you guys want a more in-depth explanation of antimicrobial protocols, digestive enzymes, stuff like that, I will have some videos on my Patreon uh, where I reveal some of my health secrets to you guys, so you can check that out down in the description below. But we have three things to keep in mind here. The overarching one is to address the underlying issue. Figure out what is causing your gut problem, whatever it is, and then there are several other things that can be done in the meantime to help address that issue. The second two essentially involve a reset of your gut microbiome. You use various antimicrobials, herbs, tinctures to kill the bacteria in your gut, then incorporate probiotics to hopefully get a favorable gut composition. The idea is that your gut bacteria was imbalanced so we can wipe it out and then reintroduce the proper ratios of that hypothetically healthy person. Now, each of these components is not so simple. Figuring out what the root cause of the gut issues are is the main difficulty. There's a plethora of things that can work together to impair organ function, cause leaky gut, create an environment where SIBO and Candida thrive. Uh, so just to explain these things briefly. Impaired organ function means your liver, pancreas, intestines aren't producing the proper digestive enzymes, stomach acidity, gut motility isn't optimal, the food is getting stuck. All of these combined usually mean SIBO and Candida. SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where your small intestine has more bacteria than it's supposed to, and that bacteria is eating the food right as it exits your stomach instead of your body absorbing it. Candida is a yeast in our guts naturally occurring that grows out of proportion when left unchecked, referred to as a fungal infection, SIFO being small intestinal fungal overgrowth. Mild symptoms uh, from these three things might be diarrhea, burping after meals, slight indigestion, fatigue, brain fog. If the overgrowth of bacteria or candida gets severe, those symptoms can be very strong. You can get insomnia, heart palpitations, even psychotic mental states and anxiety. Now, you might be eating two, three, four pounds of food per day and losing weight. You're just feeding the fungus and bacteria in your gut as opposed to your body. The most common cause of this is a high Wi-Fi environment as the radiation causes oxidative stress in your body, in your organ systems, but bacteria thrive in a high radiation environment. So essentially, your body is being damaged, but the bacteria is having a party. You're not absorbing nutrients because your small intestine, your liver, your pancreas aren't functioning. But since the bacteria is unaffected by the radiation, it is still able to eat, therefore it overgrows, leading to malabsorption, not actually absorbing the nutrients you're eating, which means your body isn't getting the vitamins, minerals, fatty acids it needs to repair cells and restore proper organ function. If bacteria and yeast are digesting all your food, you aren't getting the nutrients. In addition to electric and magnetic fields impairing organ function, Metal toxicity is very common, uh, the main culprit being iron overload in the liver, impairing 
liver function, including digestion. You can also get aluminum, mercury, arsenic toxicity that all add oxidative stress. Really just a slew of toxic substances in our environment that damage us. And point being, our livers are greatly impaired. Therefore, our digestion is greatly impaired. So let's say you realize that it was the high Wi-Fi environment. Maybe it gave you a fatty liver. Maybe that gave you iron overload. So you start taking the steps to fix those problems. Reduce the Wi-Fi, you know, fast to remove the fatty liver donate blood to get rid of the excess iron. If you don't address the underlying issue, the gut issues will come back after doing various protocols. And this may take a lot of experimenting, using various vitamin supplements, dietary changes, reduction of negative lifestyle factors, more exercise, more sun. Certain blood work and hair mineral analysis can be helpful in identifying the issue, but it's not always reliable. And if you're watching this video, I'm assuming your gut issues are somewhere near severe enough that you're considering some type of protocol to reset your gut bacteria. I want to say upfront, I'm going to be very general about this. And if you guys want specific protocols, you can reach out to me via email for consultation. And hopefully in the future, I will do some type of longer video course on healing your gut. An antimicrobial protocol is akin to taking antibiotics. The purpose is similar except antibiotics generally overdo it. They kill everything and you have unwanted side effects. You also can't just take antibiotics over and over again. You know, it might take months to years to, hopefully not years, but it can take a year or two in some cases to fix your gut and realistically doing a round of antibiotics every time you get dysbiosis, you know, an imbalanced bacteria profile, it's unrealistic. You know, you can't take antibiotics, you know, for, until you fix your gut issues, it's just not gonna happen. So do you have SIBO, Lyme disease, H. pylori, candida, some type of gut problem? Each of these specific bacteria is vulnerable to specific antimicrobials, but there is a general consistent tactic. You need to kill the bacteria, obviously. The bacteria is protected by a biofilm of mucus that needs to be disrupted. It's like a shield of armor. And then you need to prevent the bacteria from eating the food you're consuming. Those three solutions are the antimicrobials, the caustic and bitter herbs and tinctures that will destroy any bacteria or fungus. There's also certain types of fats and oils that do that. Uh, two is the biofilm busters that breaks that protective mucus that the bacteria is shielding itself from. So, you know, essentially if you took the caustic material without the biofilm busters, you're not going to effectively remove all of the bacteria. It might help initially, but you want to clear it out and fix the problem. Number three is digestive enzymes, and those have two purposes. They do break down biofilms, at least certain ones do, as you know, the biofilms are also proteins, carbs, and fats, and you have digestive enzymes that break those specifically down, but they also digest food, which prevents the bacteria, the fungus from eating the food. A proper antimicrobial protocol will clear out most of the problems in a matter of days to a week. If it doesn't, you know, the dosage isn't high enough, but the whole antimicrobial protocol goes a bit longer than that to ensure things don't come back. After you are able to clear out that bacteria, which may also require dietary changes, reduction of certain fats and carbs in your diet, things that bacteria favor, then you need to reintroduce the good bacteria. Otherwise, the bad bacteria will just come back and overgrow that one day you eat too much. I didn't mention uh, parasites, and there are antimicrobials specific to that, and generally parasites occur in the later stages of gut issues. If you notice parasites in your bowel movements, especially after doing an antimicrobial protocol, then you definitely want to get a stool test to confirm and there's other things that you want to take to remove parasites. Uh, so the proper microbiome bacterial profile is difficult to understand because there are dozens of different types of bacteria, each having dozens of different types of their own strains. It's beyond complicated, but thankfully whole food options are basically the naturally correct ratio. High quality raw grass fed kefir and yogurt from a local farm tends to be the best option. Uh, yogurt if you have SIBO or candida, kefir if you don't, 
mainly because kefir is so much higher in bacteria that it can cause SIBO in itself. Uh, so you're putting that good bacteria back in your gut. You also need to feed it and bacteria feeds off of carbohydrates. Uh, so you need to find a source of glucose, fructose, lactose, or starch that sits well with your stomach and you don't want to necessarily overdo that which involves having the correct diet to prevent dysbiosis, the bacterial overgrowth. You know, you could do all this stuff and then you decide to go have pizza and ice cream one day and you're back at square one, then you gotta do antimicrobial protocols, reintroduce the healthy bacteria, and this whole process can be done over and over and over again. But, you know, if you address what's causing your problem, you do the antimicrobial protocol correctly, and then you introduce healthy bacteria, hypothetically, we don't have to go backwards. Sometimes people do respond poorly to dairy, the kefir and the yogurt, and, and it's just difficult because kefir and yogurt, if made with the proper culture, really do have the best bacterial profile for fixing your microbiome. Um, that's where I have to consult people on specific probiotics or specific non-dairy foods uh, that can be used. Uh, the brief overview, you know, figure out what's wrong, address that, address that, address that you might have to do an antimicrobial protocol you might have to reintroduce healthy probiotic bacteria you know but some of you guys watching this might not have even altered your diet or attempted to improve your diet in the first place uh, some things i didn't mention with gut issues like vitamin d getting some sun uh, one thing that's very important is you know moving having that high gut motility not being sedentary uh, you know there's a bunch of aspects of this that i definitely didn't go over and things like taking charcoal to prevent some aspects of this but i'll try to cover that in an in-depth gut course hopefully this gets you guys started and pointed in the right direction if what someone is suggesting to you isn't along the lines of this i suggest finding someone else and getting someone that understands all of the aspects of fixing the gut uh, so thank you guys for joining me today uh, please drop a like you know share the video if you can you know i put a lot of time, effort, and work into these videos. And honestly, I have no artistic talent whatsoever. It takes me so long to draw these things. Uh, but hey, uh, Frankie Boy does it for you guys. Uh, so you can support me through those measures down in the description below. And I will see you guys for tomorrow's video.